Are you a Barbie fan? No. No. Were you excited for Barbie? Yes. No. Are you a Greta Gerwig fan? No. Yes. Did the film meet your expectations? Exceeded yep. my expectations. Do you think Barbie is fair and handles the commentary well? Yes. Yes. Let the intro roll. With our eyes we can only see so far With our bodies we can only live one life A god is a moment to sit back Live only in the heart of the jokes cry at night Let's gather at the square of the sun Discuss the dawn and undone The day and night The relevant Welcome to the new episode of Agora, the film podcast. Today we're reviewing Barbie, movie of 2023, directed by Greta Gerwig, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Keep in mind that this episode is not spoiler-free, therefore we advise you to watch the film first. So Nuno, tell me, uh, what's your relationship with the Barbie, with the Barbie intellectual property? And uh, how did you felt about the film before it was released? So, I was never a fan of Barbie. I've never really played with Barbies. Uh, but I like action figures and I played a lot as a child. So, there is that. And mm. I had high expectations for the film. I love Greta Gerwig's Little Women. And I like the marketing campaign of the film. I loved it. Didn't love the trailers, but I loved the fact that they had an, an album and the red carpet looks and the interviews. And, and, and yeah, and when I was watching the film, I thought a lot about Margaret Robbie's comments on how she read the script and she thought the film would never get made. I have to say, I really felt that while watching the film. I really felt Barbie had an edge. And this is not only because of the heavy message, but also because of the silliness and that there was so much investment here. I'm just in awe of Greta Gerwig for making such an accessible film, a fun film that can also be an awards movie and that has new ones and so much to discuss. So yeah, I'd say I really like Barbie. What about you? So I was never a fan of Barbie. As a young boy, I always preferred, uh, you know, IPs like uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers, uh, Transformers, etc. However, in the last couple of years, uh, my girlfriend forced me to watch some Barbie animation movies. So at least like I have some experience before going to the film. Like I know how Barbie animated movies look like, which is... Mm. Which is not good, like, the mo- the animated movies are awful. Uh, but it's mm. fun to make fun of them. Yeah. And I went to the theaters pretty uh, negatively preoccupied because I really didn't like the trailers. And that was the only promotional material I consumed. Uh, because, you know, obviously I went to watch movies and they would play the trailers. And it, in my opinion, the trailers looked really bad and made the film look worse. Um, but yeah, so I didn't have high expectations. And after watching the film, I have to admit that it's like very good. I would say amazing. And it feels like genuine cinema. And I never thought that the Barbie movie would make me say that. So yeah, uh, I I know Greta Gerwig as a director, but I didn't think that she would, uh, you know, accomplish something like that. So, uh, no, no. Would you like Would you like to talk about the directing, maybe? Okay. Now that you mentioned the director, what did you think of the directing in general? Let's start the review. The movie was directed by Greta Gerwig. I have not seen Lady Bird, but I have seen uh, Little Woman, which I liked. I consider Barbie far superior to Little Woman, though. I know that Gerwig is an actor-director. She focuses a lot on uh, squeezing the best possible performance out of her actors, while framing-wise, she tends to play it quite safe. 
And I can see the detail of the directing in the actor's performance. They're always on point. Moreover, I think she's doing a good job on giving enough fan service while at the same time creating her own unique uh, Barbie story. I also like how uh, in most of the time her directing actually supports the comedy. It's not just uh, a bunch of short reverse shows in which actors just throw their lines. She actually like puts care and thought behind uh, every frame. Uh, and the movie is uh, very well calculated. The film, the film is also a musical, both in the sense that the characters sing and dance. Uh, I'd say it's a half musical. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, uh, the film has a batch of music montage moments, which I do not consider musical, but at the same time, it also has incorporated songs inside the narrative. Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, you can categorize it as a musical. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like, it's not like... It's not like Disney songs where they only have one song that is part of the narrative. It has, like, two or three. Yeah, I'd say it has... Two songs the, that are part of the narrative. Are you sure about that? I think it has uh, like three directly or four. part of the narrative. It's the Lizzo song at the beginning, and the character the the Ken song. Yeah, but also the Dua Lipa song, where see they're all dancing together in a party, which is kind of yeah, a montage. That- Gerwi kind of directs with it, like because she mentions death and the song stops and then it continues. I think that's that could also classify. She's also quite imaginative. Uh, sometimes she decides to direct scenes that are more allegorical than realistic. Like she's self aware that she's making uh, a Barbie movie and she's not afraid to make uh, some scenes straight up silly, something we don't see uh, often lately. But yeah, no, no. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with you. I think Greta Gerwig was the one to have the idea of making a Barbie film that feels engagé, that feels important and relevant, and is not just trying to be a fun story. And I think she accomplishes that very well. I'm, again, amazed at how she can have the business hat on and do something really fun. But at the same time, and without undercutting the fan, being really, really heartfelt and really clever. And I think she critiques a lot in this film. It's a a satire at the end of the day. And I think you can see there's a goodwill and there's a positivity in the directing that makes the critique hit less. But but the, allows the critique to be there, so I think Greta Gerwig did an amazing job, even technically. And I think we can jump to the visuals. I think Barbie is an is an iconic film visually. I love all the references to the classics. Greta Gerwig has many videos on YouTube where she references, where she talks about all the films that she used as an inspiration. The Golden Age musicals, for example, and she talks about how to how she achieved this authentic artificiality, making everything look like a set, but still look pretty and authentic. And I think she's really, really clever in the way she uses visuals and the way she builds these sets. She makes everything very palpable, and she really recreates what it is to play with the toy, which I really appreciated. And yeah, what did you think? So I would say that in terms of presentation, uh, the film is on spot. Everything is pink, uh, as it should be. They build like a, a proper set, as you said, and they utilized it uh, repeatedly. And it actually looks very good. Art direction in general is on spot. And photography is vibrant and it suits the narrative. Cinematography is creative, not in terms of camera work and framing, but in terms of how it presents the narrative. And you know, the musical montages and sequences look, I would say, amazing. And yeah, there's not much to say. There is no much space to critique uh, the presentation in Barbie. It does its job perfectly. Yeah, I just, I would just say again, it was a really important decision to make everything practical. I don't have anything against CGI and visual effects, but in this 
film, making everything feel palpable really was very crucial. Now jumping to the sound, I think having Barbie the album was just a very good marketing campaign and I think it worked very well in the film. I think the film kind of won a bit of credibility thanks to all the artists that are associated with it. The music is good, is a beat. I think, I mean, these are professionals. They strike the right tone for each scene. Uh, and yeah, Ryan Gosling gets a song, which I think is genius. And yeah, I think in general, musically, the film has charisma. And if you join the visuals with the music and the clever and funny storytelling and writing, you really get a Barbie film and a good Barbie film. Yeah, I would ag- agree with you. I think uh, it is a musical that utilizes a lot of licensed songs uh, made, you know, by A-listed artists. But we have such like a, a big sum up of many famous artists. Like I think it has Dua Lipa, Lizzo, I don't know, Billie Eilish, Ice Spice, which all of them are like, I don't know, uh, dominating the charts. Personally, I think that the majority of the songs are nice. Some of the songs, uh, in my opinion, are better, uh, like in quality. Some of them are like more tailored around the narrative of the film. But I think all of them like work and that's good. Yeah, and they help they help make the film a party. It does yeah. really feel like a party. And I like the disco aspects to it and also the 80s vibe sometimes. But it's also very modern. It yeah. also makes it feel like an event. It. Uh-huh, I agree. And I think after the rise of the streaming services, this building an experience at the cinemas is what is going to really drive the audiences. So I think we can jump to the story. You can start. Uh, so I have a lot to say. We're talking about a very decent story that got elevated by the direction. I think while Gerwig was writing the story, she had a clear vision on how she was going to shoot each scene. The script itself has flaws, but she does a good job on fixing them fixing them throughout her directing and the performances of her cast. And the movie is not only smart, but it is also straight up funny. I, I usually don't uh, laugh out loud in comedies. I may find uh, the jokes funny, but I will not laugh. I usually just think, hmm, that's funny. But I think this is the first comedy that actually made me laugh out loud since uh, The Gentleman in 2021. So yeah, I think it is the funniest movie of the last three years, maybe. Therefore, uh, for me, there is something unique about this film. It has like rare qualities. It is at the same time so forward about its messages and what it stands for, but it is so well constructed that it doesn't come off as, that it comes off as like nuanced and exciting. It feels like a deep story, even though it usually just throws its concept in your face. I think even though it spells out most of its messages, there are a dozen, dozen more that are never brought up directly. Films usually, you know, they say like, oh, so don't tell, or... And many movies nowadays just narrate the narrative. But uh, I think on this film, it's like a show don't tell story, but it is presented as a just narrate the message kind of. Mm. Like, do you, yeah, do you get think, what I, I mean? I think it has layers. I think, yeah, I think if you want, you just don't need to go and do a deep dive and you can still bring messages with you. But if you want, you have the space to go deeper and to find uh, the nuance and the complexity. Yes, exactly. I think you phrased it better than me. You were talking about some flaws in the script. What would you say are the biggest flaws in the script? In paper, I think there are some issues in terms of pacing, but when you actually watch the film, it's so enjoyable that like you don't care. You just enjoy the movie. Mm. It's like, it reminds me a lot like 90s movies where it will it will be usual around the mid of the film to feel a little bit static, etc. But you still enjoyed them and it, they felt like uh, full-fledged experiences. That's what I felt from Barbie. 
it doesn't depend on the on the strength of the story. It also fixes its weaknesses. Yeah, I thought the story was very clever and creative, as you've said. I think the way they approach this char- these characters feels so mm-hmm. obvious now. Like having this idea of in Barbie Land, women being what they want and being the doctors and the lawyers and the politicians and Ken being just an accessory for Barbie that is marginalized and doesn't even have a house. Just so clever. It feels so obvious now but someone had to have these ideas. Uh, I think they touch on everything a Barbie film should touch. Like It's impressive the amount of boxes they tick. I think maybe sometimes it feels a bit bloated, it feels a bit crowded, it's my only minor flaw, but I think the maximalism factor is also part of the Barbie concept, and it's also part of the idea of the film, so it's that you don't even have space, time to breathe. I like how it references other stories and acknowledges the cliches it falls into, Uh, I think it does it on purpose, the film is extremely self-aware. And at the end of the day, it's a satire, and I think sometimes people have this vision of the satire as something that ends up becoming a bit flat, Mm. because it's funny, Uh, but I think in Barbie, and I've talked about this, the lines are oversimplified, and the plot is super easy to follow, but the film has layers, and the challenge isn't to understand what's happening, but what it all means. So while there is not much grace uh, in the dialogue, you have complexity at at another level. I don't know if that made sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think, again, it's an ambitious story and it's one I'm really happy they're telling in Hollywood right Mm. now. I agree. And uh, I also would like to mention that I like how the film actually contains like a fan service uh, f- for the boys, which is which surprised me a lot. We got like stupid cool clothes, we got mini fridges, horses, <laughs> like all of those motifs. Uh, like we got everything. The film portrayed boys from the woman's perspective, obviously, but and it makes fun of them, of us, but. It's not in a hateful or a toxic way. Yeah, I think first the movie critiques everyone. It doesn't just critique the men. Mm. And I think it's not just the vision of... It's not just the perspective of the women on men, but the perspective of men on other men. I mean, the ideal of men. Mm. And the masculinity taken to to 100%, you know? Yeah, glorified. And and yeah, and I think now it's a good moment. Do you think this film can also be enjoyed by guys? Oh yeah, obviously. Like I, as I told you, like, I laughed so much. Yeah. I th- I, I think I think we should break the stereotype that this Barbie film in specific is a film for women. I think the film does a very good job in making everyone feel represented, and making everyone feel emotional, and having jokes for everyone. And yeah, and I think it was very clever for Greta Gerwig. To bring Noah Bone back with her, because mm. I'm sure she would be able to scope both both audiences just writing herself, but having Noah Bone back there and assigned as one of the screenwriters really underlines the the idea that this film is balanced. Yeah, and from what I have seen on Instagram, most of the lo- boys like the Barbie movie, like they are obsessed with Ken. Uh, <laughs> and they found it really funny, etc. The only thing is, like, I have seen, like, yes, a minority of, like, being really mad for being criticized in a movie or saying that it's sexist, etc. But I think this is just people missing the point. I th- yeah, I think they don't really get the point of the film. They don't really understand it. And, uh, yeah, they go already feeling attacked. Yeah. They go in a defensive mode. And now about the, the acting and the characters... Mm, the acting and the characters. I can start if you want. I think mm-hmm. uh, Margot Robbie was the most suitable choice to play Barbie. She's literally like a real life Barbie, and she's an extraordinary actress. She always brings like a charisma in her performance, and I always enjoy her. 
My favorite performance of her is by far like in Babylon, but I think she also did great work in this one too. Maybe I think it's m- my second favorite performance of hers. Uh, I only think like in the first 15 minutes of the film, she kind of looked creepy with that forced smile of hers, but maybe that was intentional. Uh, other really? than I, that, I didn't feel that. Yeah, I was like, Jesus Christ, she's scary. Like she had like a very static smile when she's... She oh, was... no, I liked it. She was very much walking like a doll. I liked the physicality. She would, like, her chin was up and her eyes were always open. And I liked it. I, I thought it was, like, straight out of a horror movie, honestly. <laughs> yeah, really? like, uh, not not her body language, but her face. Like, the mm. her face language, let's say. It was very creepy. Maybe that's what the screenwriters want to say like oh look uh, what has been idealized uh, etc like does this look human to you or something like that maybe they they had something like that in their mind but yeah I, th- I think i think also margaret robbie did a great job i actually think this is the performance of her career i think she's better at this than she's being harley quinn i think again people tend to underestimate these types of performances because they're funny and they seem to have less nuance. Uh, but I think this is like this is like Jack Sparrow for Johnny Depp. Mm. I think she does really good character work. I think she is really funny. She can get really emotional. She cries so many times. And she nails the character arc. And yeah, I think she put the work to build a character and to build a personality. Because Barbie is just... A look mm. and she had to give a voice to that and i think she also did a very good job looking being naive but not being dumb i think it's just a great performance i think she glows yeah she deserved to be the protagonist she deserved that role yeah and i think she deserves at least to be considered for an award uh, for awards nominations mm. when you say considered do you mean nomination or do you mean just considered I think she should be considered, in my opinion, she should be nominated, but I haven't seen all the performance of the year. I think she does enough, but let's see. I haven't like seen... I, to be honest, I don't want to see Ryan Gosling being nominated for Best Supporting Actor and then Margaret Robbie not being nominated for Best Actress. Why? Because I think they're equally good. I, I don't think Ryan Gosling is considered Supporting Actor. I think he's considered Main Actor. Oh no no no! It's supporting I think. Yeah, like I... in the in all the polls and everything. Oh, it's gonna be between him, Robert Downey Jr. and Robert De Niro. So, I think the fight for his best supporting actor will be between Robert Downey Jr., Robert De Niro, and Ryan Gosling. Honestly, in my opinion, I think uh, I was going to say that uh, later, but I think it's Ryan Gosling's performance is the highlight of the film. Like, how can I say, the best comedy material of the film is when they make fun of Ryan Gosling, of Ken. And he Mm. is also kind of, he's obviously the bad guy, but he also serves the heart of the movie. Mm. Yeah, I don't agree. Mm. I think, think, yeah, I think he does, he's, he's very important, he's great. And he does he does give the film a lot of heart, but I think it's Margaret Robbie's emotional arc and it's Margaret Robbie's work that will make you get emotional at the end. Yeah, uh, no, no, I mean only performance wise, like what stays with you. Like, actually, you are right. I think in terms of um, on an emotional level, uh, Barbie is way more important. But like in terms of making the film what it is, I think Ryan Gosling is very important. But I think everyone, I think no one was expecting this for him. And the fact that it was a surprise uh, makes people hype his performance more. Like everyone knew Margaret Robbie was going to do a great job, you know. So I think we should make sure Margaret Robbie is also, also receives the flowers. Personally, I had no, no expectations for every, anyone because I was just negatively preoccupied. Uh, mm. but like I think it's fine for like because remember that like he's a supporting actor so if we give him mm-hmm. an o- if they give him an Oscar they're not saying like he's the most important actor in the Barbie movie they're saying he's like the best supporting actor of the year because 
he still stays supportive. Like I think, for example, it wouldn't undermine Barbie's performance if she, for example, got nomination for best main actress, and Ryan Gosling got like actually, for example, won the award for best supporting oh, yeah, actor yeah, yeah. because they're yeah. doing different job, right? They compete. Yeah, and they are competing on different categories and with different people. Yeah, I understand that. And what about the rest of the cast? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we said about Ray Gosling. But, like, it was a good idea to put the he's literally me guy as Ken, uh, who is and like you know Ken like in the movie is kind of like a stereotypical generalization of men. Uh, and I think his performance, as I said previously, was my favorite. He has great comedic timing and he is remarkable and he is the main reason I was laughing because most of the jokes are like making fun of him. Uh, he's, you know, the goofball of the film, but also the bad guy. Like it's it, it works nice. And I believe that the character works in relation to the allegory. You know, previously I mentioned the heart of the film. Yeah, you. I was wrong on that. I mean, like he's like a very important aspect of the allegory of the film. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention that during the end of the second act, I was like scared that they would treat the character unfairly by the end of the film, like kick him in the side and return him to the original normality of the film, which would be he being homeless and uh, everyone (laughs) treating him very unfairly, etc. Which would defeat the purpose, but the story resolves the conflict of the character, you know, appropriately, which surprised me a lot. And that's when I was like, okay, that that movie, like, nailed it 100%. It's not only funny, but it also, like, handles the story perfectly. And the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think the rest of the cast also did a very good job. I think America Ferrera, Kate McKinnon, Will Ferrell, Ariana Greenblatt, Michael Sarah, Rhea Perlman did a good job as well of course uh, smaller roles but they also have their time to shine i think also having well-known actors playing different versions of barbie and different versions of ken makes them feel more makes each character feel a bit more special even if they have less lines or even if they have less screen time and yeah i think the cast did a good job. Mm. Most of those secondary characters are m- most like caricatures, but they're fun. And mm-hmm. I think they also work great for the knowledgeable people about the Barbie lore, let's say. It like mm-hmm. Because they're like, oh, it's Alan. I know about the Barbie lore. Oh, it's that guy and that guy. So maybe it has more inside jokes that us, that we're not Barbie fans, cannot uh, grasp. I just wanted to mention that I like the human characters that were part of the movie, Uh, like uh, Ariana Greenblatt as Sasa and America Ferrer as Gloria. They work well because as part of their dramatic conflict, they need to be convinced, just like the audience, that Barbie and Barbie Land still needs to exist. They also balance out the quirkiness of the other characters by being, well, for the film standards, like uh, normal human beings. Uh... And lastly, I would just want to say that I think it was a great decision to include the creator of Barbie in the film and actually involve her in the story. It is kind of it kind of reminded me of like Stan Lee's cameos in the first uh, Spider Verse film, and I really like that. You know, it, uh, no, no, you know, like Stan Lee sometimes like says uh, interacts with Tom, uh, Peter Parker in some Spider Man movies, and it's always like trying to help him become, you know, the hero he needs to be. And here, like, it works kind of different because the creator helps Barbie become a human, in a way. But, like, mm-hmm. I really like this addition. Uh, so should we jump to the Agra moment? Mm, yeah, I just... I, I just want to conclude about Barbie. I just want to say that Barbie is cinema and it is very well written, very well directed. It has phenomenal performances delivers multiple great messages, has at the same time a lot of fan service for both girls and boys that are, you know, unaware of the intellectual property. And this is so unexpected for a Barbie movie. Like, as I said, it does so many things. And it's also like the funniest film of the year. So, 
and has mini fridges, so come on. In conclusion, Barbie is a great, great film. It really recreates the feeling of playing with dolls and fighting with rackets, if you get what I mean. It's a party with color, music, it's so much fun. Uh, Craft-wise, it's a marvel. Story-wise, on one side, it's silly and, and easy to follow. On the other, it's clever, bold, and it is complex in regard to the commentary. A commentary on women, the brand, growing up, and you will get emotional. Again, I'm amazed that this film accomplished being a blockbuster and the new one's awards contender at the same time. It has won the box office. <laughs> Let the awards come. I just hope that the fact that it's Barbie and it's pink and all that doesn't stop people from checking it out. I'd say it's a must watch. So now, jumping to the every moment, who should start? So I have decided to only talk about one message last theme so i'm going to talk about the allegory so i don't know what you have decided to talk about i'm gonna basically interpret the whole film like i, I divide the film by th like in three <laughs> there's three ways i think you can interpret the barbie film from three points of views should i talk yeah, about the start. allegory and then you can uh, do your marvelous uh i don't know <laughs> um analyzation of the Barbie yeah. of the Barbie movie break down yeah, yeah. I mean my analyzation is not small either like uh, I have analyzed the allegory quite a bit so as I mentioned before uh, I believe that Barbie is a deep and nuanced movie it tackles a couple of themes except feminism like it has more to it like beauty standards toxicity gender roles patriarchy female power icons and more if I start talking about each theme and message, the Agora moment would uh, last more than three hours. And that's what Nuno <laughs> decided to do anyways. But yeah, <laughs> I, I decided to focus only on Barbie as an icon and how this film's thesis justifies, you know, the existence of uh, empowered uh, feminist female icons. I, like, I really like how Barbie Land uh, represents something like a collective place where all the empowered Barbie variations exist. And you know, as a man watching the first act of the film, I felt bad for the Kens of Barbie Land and the, the way they were treated. They were uh, treated as superficial objects. Their only purpose is to satisfy the woman of Barbie Land. And they hold no power or influence. And the movie repeats multiple times that Barbie Land is completely opposite to the real world. The real world is a patriarchy and Barbie Land is a matriarchy, practically. Which are two sides of the same coin, but they counterbalance each other. Because the real world is still vastly patriarchal and the female stereotypical roles have not been you know erased yet there is still need for barbie land to exist in order to give uh, courage courage and uh, empower all the girls that exist in the real world and after the defeat of the kens they actually succeed in gaining some power and influence and respect in barbie land but nowhere near as much to be considered equal with the women of barbie land they were only allowed to get like the freedom and power that women possess in the real world right now. Because as mentioned before, Barbie Land is the completely opposite of the real world. And uh, the Kens of Barbie Land will have the same rights and power and respect and freedom uh, only when the women in the real world will have uh, the same too. It would be hypocritical to feel bad for the Kens of Barbie Land and not uh, for the actual existing woman of the real world. And I think it's such a strong allegory because it puts many people in the position of uh, women, hence making it easier for them to relate to them and understand why even today feminism is still important and needed and uh, there is still like a long way to go. Uh, no, no, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Yeah, in general, I agree with you. And Barbie works on at so many levels. It explores the doll and the brand. It explores women and gender. And it's about growing up too. So, 
the last scene for me is where everything comes together. Every character gets its ending, except Barbie, because Barbie doesn't have one. Barbie has become an idea, an idea with forever. Barbie is every woman, it's empowerment and inclusion. And Barbie has almost a personality crisis throughout the film. At her lowest point, she lands at the place of the discontinued Barbies. She uh, doesn't feel like Barbie anymore. Doesn't feel like she fits the idea of Barbie. Um, and she acknowledges the fact that she's just a stereotype. And that she has built unrealistic standards for women. Everything such a told her. At the end, everything... At the end, everyone says goodbye to the stereotypical Barbie as she leaves with the, with her creator. Barbie is on the path to become a real woman. The brand doesn't hide the cellulite and imperfections anymore. Her feet don't need to be arched. Her chin doesn't need to be always up. This is stated with a feeling of gratitu gratitude, though. This is stated with a feeling of gratitude, though. We mothers stand still so our daughters can look back to see how far they have come. How beautiful. And then as they invite the audience to accompany the evolution of the brand, they also deconstruct the idea of women and the idea of perfect women. Barbie, representing women, says she doesn't want to be an idea anymore, she wants to be a part of the imagining. It's the freeing of women's stereotypes. Every girl and every woman is a Barbie. Also, besides having the clever inversion of gender roles in Barbie land they've to talked about, uh, that allows the film to present a new perspective of women's injustice, making it more palpable to men too, Gerwig shows, through Ken's arc, how women's fight impact men. Women revising their image challenges men, and forces them to revise their image too. Gender at the end of the day is an idea that is always in evolution in society but also in each individual throughout their life. This also can all mean or it can all be a metaphor for a child that leaves the world of playing, that leaves Barbie land and suddenly comes across the, the real world, realizing how difficult it is to exist, or more specifically, to be a woman. And this idea gets its cherry on top by having Barbie go to the China colleges for the first time. So yeah, I'd say, he, here are my three takes on Barbie. Uh, and I'd say, as you can see, Barbie is very sophisticated, and these are my interpretations, but you can have yours, and this film will leave you talking for hours if you give it a chance now jumping to the ranking moments how does this film uh, rank in your top five of the year so i feel weird about saying that maybe i don't want to say a saint maybe <laughs> but i have to admit that after careful consideration, I would put Barbie in my number one of the year. So, well, so I don't have any problem with admitting it. Barbie is my favorite film of the year. <laughs> Let's see if any film can dethrone it. Can dethrone it exactly. So tell me, what's your top five? Um, for me, it's like number one, Barbie. Number two, Into the Spider-Verse. Uh, number three, Gardens of the Galaxy. Number four, Oppenheimer. And number five, some movie. I don't know. I'm not going to even... T I'm not going to talk about Oppenheimer yet because that's for the next episode. Yeah, but, but it's I not the say... next episode. It's in the same day, right? Yeah, that's true. But I'm going to say Barbie in first place. Then Spider-Man Beyond the Spider-Verse, then The Little Mermaid, then John Wick 4, and then Cocaine Bear. <laughs> I know. Okay. Uh, but that's it for now, I think. Yep. Um, make sure you check out our next up episode. Is Uploading in available the right now. Yeah.
Yeah, that is about Oppenheimer. Yeah, we did the double feature too, but in two separate episodes. So yeah, uh, thank you for listening to our podcast till the end. It was Aris and Nuno. We're going to take a hiatus uh, for two months maybe, and we will start uh, uploading episodes again in uh, September. So mm-hmm. yeah, we can't wait to come back. Thank you very much, and yeah, have a great day. Thank you. Bye.